verdict. And those of you in my introduction to paralegal studies class, uh, you've just recently heard about motion for directed verdict. This motion would be made by the opposite side. So since the plaintiff just rested, it will be the defense that will stand up. Your Honor, I would like to move for a directed verdict. Plaintiff has failed to prove his case and there's no reasonable uh, person that could agree that he has. This is a way for the other side to say, you know what? We're wasting our time here. Plaintiff's case was obviously flawed. Now, in a defamation for action, for instance, uh, the let's say that throughout the entire testimony of the plaintiff's case, not once did anyone say that the information was transferred to someone else. So maybe the, uh, the defendant said it, but he might have said it to himself. And if the plaintiff failed to show that anyone actually heard the information, there is no case of defamation. The information was not transferred to anyone else. So in that case, a motion for directed verdict would be granted because the jury could not uh, in any reasonable way decide that there was defamation. The information was never transferred to anyone else. Defamation could not exist. Now, directed verdicts usually aren't granted because the attorneys are pretty good at knowing this stuff ahead of time. Additionally, if there really was uh, this sort of lack of evidence, then chances are it would have been dismissed before trial uh, or it could be that the plaintiff just completely forgot to uh, ask that question in which case the judge will usually permit a reopening of the plaintiff's case to provide that evidence but it's up to the judge then the defendant's case will come up the defense and it's the same thing. The defense will call a witness, their witness, they can only provide direct evidence or examination. Then the plaintiff will be able to cross-examine and so on and so forth. It's the same thing, it's just now we're talking about the defendant. So what happens at the end of the defendant's case when the defendant rests motion for directed verdict from the plaintiff the plaintiff will now stand up and say your honor I move for a directed verdict there's no way the jury could possibly uh, say there isn't defamation in this case no way whatsoever the defense didn't defend itself whatsoever uh, there is no defense the jury would have to come back with a verdict in, in my favor. Again, especially at this point, it's probably not going to be granted because there's not much left to waste as far as time goes. The jury just needs to come up with a verdict. The last part also probably one of the most enjoyable parts and that's the closing argument closing argument is helping the jury leading the jury to the conclusion that the attorney wants the jury to have so you might have an instance of you know let's Go back to that testimony about the uh, the light shining in the window uh, example. The defense will, during the closing argument, say, "You heard plaintiff's own witness say that she could not remember whether or not she was blinded by the light of the store because the sun was behind her, and therefore may not have even seen the 
accident. That there's no way then that she could be a reliable witness. She gave very detailed accounts of what happened, yet she can't even remember whether or not she was even looking at the accident when it happened. Something is amiss. Something is wrong. And that, you cannot use her testimony to build the plaintiff's case. In fact, you can use her testimony to exclude the plaintiff's case. It's just not reliable. And it just goes to show that my client is not liable under this. So you can see here, you can see here that in closing arguments, the each side is drawing in evidence the evidence that during the opening statements were told that uh, the jury would see, now you're taking in that evidence that has been seen and bringing it to a conclusion. Usually the, uh, and this depends on state law, uh, the plaintiff will go first, the defendant will go next, and then occasionally the plaintiff will reserve a little bit of time for rebuttal. After this point, jury instructions are going to be given by the judge to the jury, stating, you know, this is what the law is, this is what you have to use in order to determine uh, what you have to, uh, what kind of conclusion you can come to, uh, usually the attorneys would have talked about the standard of uh, the standard used to review the information, whether it needs to be um, uh, in criminal cases, you say beyond a reasonable doubt, but uh, clear and convincing is the uh, is synonymous in the civil uh, realm clear and convincing evidence, so that's one standard. And then preponderance of the evidence is the other standard. And preponderance of the evidence is the most used standard, and that's really just 51%. Uh, you just need that it's more likely than not likely that the plaintiff is correct. So the judge will talk to the jury about these things, what kind of... Um, standard must be used, what law must be used, uh, what the elements of the law is, uh, and then the jury will be able to uh, deliberate and then come back with a verdict. The verdict will be presented and then at this point the losing party might request a judgment Notwithstanding the verdict, Jano, the losing party might move for judgment notwithstanding the verdict. A judgment notwithstanding the verdict is the attorney asking the judge to reconsider the motion for directed verdict. It is not to overturn the, the jury verdict, but rather to ask the judge to overturn his ruling or to actually make a ruling if the judge had just um, told the attorney that he's going to withhold his decision on this until later. The judge can, uh, at that point, say, you know what, when I ruled on the directed verdict, that was an incorrect ruling. I should have ruled in your favor. This would happen when the jury does something that just is so bizarre that uh, it makes no sense. That no reasonable jury could have possibly come to this conclusion. It's not used lightly. It's almost as if the judge is overturning the verdict. But technically, it's the judge agreeing.